I love to listen to music no matter where I'm at. School, work, editing videos for YouTube, etc. What I love is discovering new, refreshing, and experimental music. So when I discovered a still relatively underground artist by the name of Cemetery, I didn't know just how much I would come to enjoy his sound and those he frequently collaborates with. Cemetery and those under the Haunted Mound name are bringing an entirely new sound to rap music, blending elements of black metal, witch house, harsh noise, drill, and so much more. So tonight, take my hand as we cross the rainbow bridge and explore the world of the haunted mound. Cemetery is the name of a mysterious rapper hailing from the rural parts of Northern California. Nothing much is known about Cemetery's personal life save for a few pieces of miscellaneous info. Judging by a few past interactions fans have had with Cemetery, it's clear he just wants his personal life to be left private and for fans to just focus on the art and music. Cemetery's earliest break into the underground music scene seems to be the Gravehouse mixtape with former collaborator and former Haunted Mound co-founder Ghost Mountain. Cemetery's sound even early on in his career can be described as a mix of harsh black metal samples and Chief Keef style drill patterns, two of which are cited in many interviews as Cemetery's biggest musical influences. Since 2019, Cemetery has released a total of six mixtapes, each setting themselves apart with distinctly different tones, sounds, and even lore that spreads across each of the projects. A clear pattern can be seen throughout Cemetery and other Haunted Mountain affiliates' work. This theme of campy, hyper-violent horror is reminiscent of old campy, gore, and slasher movies, a lot of which are either sampled or referenced throughout Cemetery's work. Melodic lyrics and songs alluding to horror icons like Leatherface, Pyramid Head, and Mothman, as well as songs about real-life murderers such as Nevada Ten. It's definitely one of Cemetery's biggest appeals in a post-SoundCloud scream rap horrorcore vibe pioneered by artists like Lil Ugly Mane, Ghost Mane, Raider Clan, and Suicide Boys. Cemetery's sound reminds me a lot of an updated version to this sound, but done to its most extreme, mind-melting insanity. Cemetery's aesthetic reflects this greatly in both his album art and the photos he presents himself in, calling back to a lot of old-school black metal photo shoots, weird rapper flex photos, deep-fried memes, and Tumblr-era grunge aesthetic posts. There's a certain charm to the aesthetics of Cemetery from the odd, almost liminal space vibe his art and photos give off to the the almost ironic true religion worship seen in many of Cemetery's banger fits. The Graveman's got some otherworldly drip, and it really fits the overall character Cemetery is going for. But we're not here to talk about true religion and deep fried photo shoots. Let's take our first step through the haunted mound and see just what really makes it tick. Gravehouse. The project serves as both Cemetery's and former member and Haunted Mountain co-founder Ghost Mountain's first project. It is an early indicator of both the artist's sound moving forward and an overall stage setter for the world of the Haunted Mound. It is dense and deeply atmospheric, serving as a refreshing project in our current wave of post-drain gang hyperpop contemporaries that, much to Cemetery's dismay, he is often compared to. Nevertheless, Gravehouse more so embodies movements such as early cloud rap, Chicago drill, and which house while still maintaining many of the tropes seen in modern rap today, with references to AK-47s and Uzis being replaced with dingy, worn out shotguns and box cutters. The project is distinctly DIY, with this strange album cover looking more like a memorial photo to the two rappers and a lo-fi production that would make even the most hardened one-man black metal project blush. While not as overblown and harsh as many of Cemetery's projects moving forward, there are still themes that would set a blueprint for most of the beats Cemetery would use moving forward. Sampling is probably something that shines the most for this project and the rest of his releases. Bathory, Life Lover, and Batushka songs are all what make up the majority of the song sample structure, with some being reused even on different songs. It's definitely something that piqued my interest initially being both a black metal fan and a fan of densely edgy hip-hop. Unlike many before, while Gravehouse certainly has its quirks and edgy tropes 
tropes reminiscent of the genres I compared it to before, as well as the genres it's deeply influenced by, the project feels more like a celebration and entire reconstruction of the genres mentioned, taking the blood-soaked imagery and serial killer worship of Memphis Horrorcore, flipping the usually racist homophobic tropes of lo-fi underground black metal on its head and replacing it with Nazi stomping DIY punk flair, and just an overall dedication to the craft, aesthetic, and passion that would only continue to grow in spades as Cemetery evolved the sound and the vision of Haunted Mound. Gravehouse serves as the stepping stone into this world the artists have created. For any of those who want something like a mix of Chief Keef or Young Lean if their sound was covered in thick, dense fog of Silent Hill. Join me as we cross the Rainbow Bridge. Rainbow Bridge is the first entry in a series of projects released by Cemetery and are considered by many to be a set of projects that display Cemetery's art and craft to the fullest. Rainbow Bridge 1 was released in November 2019 and features a total of 11 songs and one bonus track. Cemetery here is still building onto the previous sound introduced in Gravehouse, blending melodic rap flows with lyrical content that's not too far off standard DSBM track. Lyrics alluding to murder, self-isolation, death, and misanthropy are all mainstays in Cemetery's lyrical arsenal, as well as references to tweaking off bang energy, which make for this almost comedic flair in the work. The sound of this mixtape is more varied this time around in terms of production. The heavier samples such as Life Lover, Woods of Desolation, Apathy, and more make a return, but there's some more interesting sample work that I heard while listening through. I think it's been the first time I've heard a title fight song sampled in a rap beat, and besides that, there's also a Smashing Pumpkins and Shoo Shoo sample, the latter of which may have just been a homage to Black Craze song, Extort For Me. The production is much harsher, angrier, and just downright evil, but still features the deeply atmospheric instrumental and vocal content that draws many to the sound in the first place. The features are definitely a strong point of this album, with various great Ghost Mountain verses to accompany as well as a feature from experimental rapper slash noise artist God's Wisdom on what is possibly the best song on this tape. Toolbox is a heavy hitting trap anthem with melodic yet confrontational violent lyrics that easily sets itself apart from any other song on this project. The first Rainbow Bridge already opens up a lot of potential for Cemetery and the artist who worked on this project with him. Even from this early stage, you can see the lore that they all seem to be building, with references to characters and creatures that inhabit the Haunted Mound and the places that reside within it. This project opened up a lot for Cemetery, allowing for him to continue adding onto the vision that he had and continues to go for. I'm going to be honest here. I did not like Rainbow Bridge 2 the first time I listened to it, and it's still not my favorite project to come out of Cemetery or the Rainbow Bridge series as a whole. However, with that being said, it did grow on me after a little while. Despite the now established sound that Cemetery has conjured in his mystic rap crypt, RB2 has such a much more present grimy drill influence and some different aspects going on in terms of production behind the scenes. More trap drums and drill vocal flows remind me of something like a goth chief keep. Sampling is more or less the same with some dark thrown and Burzum samples thrown in, and even one of my favorite black metal projects, Forgotten Tomb, making an appearance. This also marks the first non-musical samples, including a scene from The Devil's Reject and an odd clip of Trevor's death scene from GTA 5, with the Xbox notification sound left in the beat. Shot. 
Cemetery's vocals are also a lot slower and pitched down, giving off this sludgier vibe that we'll see more on the next entry in this series. There are some songs I really like on this project, such as My Cutter, Red Mist, and Skellingtons with Juju, but the beats are just more of the same on here and it hasn't been in my personal rotation as much as the other projects in his discography. I'm sure at the time this would be considered less accessible than the other releases prior to RB3 due to the subtle but noticeable changes in production method. However, I wouldn't personally recommend it as a first project, especially if you were just getting comfortable with the sound. After a little bit of extended listening though, Rainbow Bridge 2 still manages to grow on me after a few listens and it definitely still recommend it if you want to still dive down the rabbit hole of Cemetery's discography. Warboy managed to be a nice little package released last year serving only as a short EP by Cemetery. It manages to be pretty underrated personally for me in terms of the entire discography, featuring a lot more melodic vocal delivery and some pretty sick guitar riffs, making it more closely to a metal album than a lot of the previous bodies of work. While there is not a lot to say here due to its short length, Warboy never overstays its welcome and manages to be probably one of the more manageable projects for casual listeners to check out and enjoy. Acre Wrist is possibly the peak of the collaborative career between two of Haunted Mountain's heaviest hitters, serving as the last full-length collab between Cemetery and Ghost Mountain and Ghost Mountain's last project for the foreseeable future. The project, to me, acts as a proper send-off to the person that aided in forming and molding the vision and sound of the Haunted Mound to what it is today. It may not have been the Gravehouse 2 that many of the duo's fans had hoped for, but nevertheless it is a special release that may never be matched again in its own way. Throughout the mixtape, 37 minute runtime lies an intense, emotional, and poetic process of disgust, atmosphere, and grit. The whole album feels more haunting and cryptic than the previous entries, with the two MCs utilizing their best traits and the natural musical chemistry they have together. It is here we also see the inclusion of definitely one of the heaviest tracks emotionally, their cover of Goodbye Horses, a song originally performed in the 80s by the mysterious, almost unknown singer Q Lazarus, only to be made popular by a certain skin carving serial killer in Silence of the Lambs. Cemetery and Ghost Mountain's take on the track is as beautiful as it is dirty, opting for more sludgy, slowed down, dampened instrumental production and vocal work. I'm almost sad that there are two songs after it because it feels like the best ending to the two of the most interesting duos in underground rap history. Don't be sad because it's over. Be happy that it happened. <laughs> Hey guys, this is Post Editing Yoshimi here. I want to take a moment out of this video to let you all know that I have a Patreon. With videos taking a little bit longer to make and me wanting to do more with my videos, I decided to open up a Patreon for those who want to maybe financially support me a little bit more. 
it's a completely optional thing. It only has one tier. It's fi at five dollars a month, and it allows you to have access to everything I post on that Patreon, including behind the scenes content, uh, bonus content, and more. Again, it's completely optional. Nothing will be locked behind a paywall at all. No content that will be seen on the main channel will be locked behind a paywall, and everything on the YouTube channel is completely free. This is just for those who maybe want a little something extra out of my stuff and want to you know financially support me if they can again completely optional if you can't afford it please do not subscribe to the patreon there will be other ways to support me such as telling your friends about the channel and even you know subscribing and sharing the video i want to thank everybody to who has watched uh the video so far uh we're at 7250 subscribers i think at the time of this video and I just want to thank you all. Anyways, back to the cemetery video. Chaos. Pure fucking chaos. Those are the few words that can describe Cemetery's latest mixtape, Rainbow Bridge 3. I honestly did not expect how insane this album was going to feel and sound when it dropped earlier this year. I remember listening to this the night it dropped and being hit with almost an hour of bludgeoning, nauseating, blown out harsh noise blackened rap metal. Rainbow Bridge 3 feels like what Cemetery has been building up to over the past two years. A barrage of insanely blood soaked and distortion soaked instrumentation. My jaw was on the floor for a good majority of my first few listens. This is what the most vile, oppressive, and absolutely gnarly hellscape sounds like in rap form. Even in my years listening to horrorcore, trap metal, emo rap, and drill, I have never heard something more absolutely fucking violent in the underground scene, and it feels like a breath of fresh air because of it. The black metal influences on here take the front seat, crashes the car, and sets it on fire with how perfectly it works on this tape. It reminds me a lot of the harsh noise laden black metal like gnaw their tongues and drag them sunlight, mixed in with Chief Keef if all he consumed was gut-wrenching amounts of bang energy and snuff films. Rainbow Bridge 3 is something I have been waiting for in music, and something I hope that will be explored more with not only Haunted Mound artists, but others putting their own original spin on the formula. Rainbow Bridge serves as a perfect end to the trilogy, as well as a contender for one of my personal albums of the year. Cemetery is an unrelenting force unlike anything the underground has seen in quite a while. Regardless of what people say, listening through his discography has been an extremely enjoyable hell ride full of blown out harsh black metal samples, bloodthirsty vocal and lyrical content, as well as intriguing world building and lore. There's a certain charm to it all, and I can't wait to see what Cemetery and all of the members of the Haunted Mound have in store for the future. This has been Yoshimi, and I'm on the Rainbow Bridge. Cemetery. Chrome shine, breathing black tar. Prius whip and we don't play fuck a cop car. We ride goofy, hit you with my crowbar. Cemetery ghost mountain, don't know who we are. We ride shine bright till we see the sun. Gasoline soaked hand on my shotgun. We ride through the night, it is just begun. Fury roll through the sky, feel your blood.